Everyone in life faces different battles at different stages of their lives. Some battles are fierce, some are not so fierce, some that requires that you have a higher authority to help you win these battles. And uh, some just give up and, you know, throw in the towel and um, that's the hand. Some lose their lives in the course of this battle. Some are wounded and they ne never get to recover. You're welcome to the Purposeful Woman Channel. Today we'll be discussing on how to win a battle. Stay tuned. <music> life where we all live i mean in this universe you will agree with me that um, we have a lot of things that um, you know a lot of problems that come across us uh, all some are are just you know they are just so strong that they don't want to leave they'll become like some of us have even accepted those things those challenges as a you know part and parcel of us you know and uh, sometimes the way we see a battle we see it as um like we can do this of course there are some things that you cannot do on your own and there are some that you sh you should be able to handle definitely and when we talk about um battles some of us have a different idea of battles of course we know that uh, a battle has to do with um you know armies and soldiers coming together to fight and um these uh these armies are specially trained this is what they do and then it, it also requires some mapped out plans some tactics and whatsoever and the battles also has to do with um, someone one of the oppositions uh, having a higher authority so the one who has a higher authority or has a higher power or has a well-equipped army so to say most times or something doesn't come out to be the victorious one you know so things can you know can can change and um like that so battles are always very violent because um in the course you have soldiers who die we have soldiers who are wounded we have soldiers who are bruised and then we have soldiers who are of course you know captured and taken as a slaves and their spoils are, are taken all the time battles can mean that you are trying you are striving from freedom maybe from a strong old maybe from from an addiction or maybe from something that you that is a, 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 a reoccurrence in your life that is not you know it's it does not fantastic and just want to get over it and um, uh, um battles of life can also mean that you are trying you know to do away with with uh, with failure so battles can come in different forms take for example a um, woman who has been married for a very long time we can say and doesn't have a child we can say that that woman is had actually facing a battle of you know child bearing a lot of things can can be tapped as battle it depends on your own side of of the coin of what is happening to you or what you you tag um a battle and it is also so uh, it's so pathetic that um, some people have lost their lives in the course of this battle. Some are wounded. I mean, wounded. They are broken and they never recovered. They, they, they never recovered from it till they died. And then we have some who are still fighting right now, and they are already thinking about, oh, I'm just going to, you know, I don't think he can do this anymore. I'm ready to quit. And there are still some who are still out there, still thinking that no, I know there is a way. I know that I, I am, I, I, I can overcome. I know that. So I'm here to bring you good news. I'm here to tell you that, hey guys, come on. There is an escape route. There is a way. There is a way of winning that battle. Okay, uh, I'm going to be taking us through um, uh, talking to us about uh, a king in uh, 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 in the book of Second Chronicles. That 
Bible passage is a very popular verse, but a lot of us are familiar with the story of that king of Israel who is called King Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat, you know, the second book, uh, the second, the book of Chronicles, the second book of Chronicles talked about the things that um, Jehoshaphat did, but it is so unfortunate that a lot of us, we do not read the background story, but we always claim, oh, that when you sing praises, it brings the hands of God down, and God just, you know, lay ambush against your enemies, just like he did for Jehoshaphat. I want to tell you today that there is more to that song that was being sung and then we are just going to go ahead and look at the background story of how Jehoshaphat won against three kingdoms. Three kingdoms. So let's go into details quickly. Okay, so first thing first. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 17, we saw Jehoshaphat as the man who sought after God. Okay? He sought after God not because of what he wanted, but because he wanted to know God. He wanted to know God. So, it wasn't about winning a battle because even at that time in the book of um, 2 Chronicles 17, there was no battle at all. It was um, the preceding verse talked about, and that's chapter 16, rather, talked about how his father, uh, Asha, who was the former king, died, and then um, actually he died because he didn't do the right things, those those things that were pleasing to God. He became sick, and the Bible said that even in his sickness, when he ought to have repented, he refused, he did not repent, and so he died, and the Jehoshaphat became king in his stead. And the Bible recorded, uh, according to uh, 2 Chronicles 17, verse 3 and 4, that in Jehoshaphat did not seek the God of Baal. He did not seek Baal, but sought and yearned with all his heart's desire, with all his desire for the Lord, the God of his father, David, not as his father, Asher, and walked in his commandments and not after the ways of Israel. So the books of Chronicles chapter 2, chapter 17, verse 3 and 4 told us the kind of person that uh, Jehoshaphat was, even though he, he lived in a time where Israel was rebellious and he was raised by a father who also did not walk according to the counsel of the Lord. But the Bible says that uh, Jehoshaphat yearned after God with all the desires of his heart, with all his desires. Well, you know what desires are, the things that I want. That is what he wanted God. He just wanted to seek God. And then he followed after the commandment of God. Of course, someone who yearned, who desired God will always, it will be easy for him to to you know follow the precepts of god so in winning your battles you must seek god and choose to take a detour from you know from those abominable things uh, uh, uh you're doing those that way that is not pleasing unto god and begin to walk in his commandment and seek him with all your desire just as jehoshaphat did okay another thing according to the, to that same second chronicles chapter 17 verse six in verse six the bible told us that jehoshaphat had courage you know he had courage his heart the bible says his heart was lifted up in the ways of the lord his heart was lifted up in the ways of the lord another translation says that um he was courageous in the lord that means he, he, he uh, when i looked up on um, the word um lifted up uh, uh, that his heart was lifted up in the way of the Lord. The Bible says he was arrogant about God. He was arrogant about the ways of God, about the deeds of God, about the things that God has done. He, so he was so committed. Uh, he was committed to the things of God. He was committed to knowing God. He was committed to exalting the name of the Lord. You know when you are proud about something, you begin uh, about someone, you begin to show forth the name and the praises of such a person. And so the Bible recorded that Jehoshaphat pulled down all the temples of the pagan gods that Israelites was worshipping, even the ones that his father, you know, erected and built, Jehoshaphat pulled in that because why? He had courage, he was proud of his God and then he kept to those things. 
And so, uh, uh, um, I'm going to ask you today, what are you boastful of? Because you all share for the Bible told us in verses that it was boastful, you was proud about God. What do you take pride in? What is your confidence? Jehoshaphat had confidence in God. What is your confidence? What are you committed to? Because of his confidence, he was committed to God. What are you committed to? The ways of the Lord or your intellects? Is that the strength of the Lord or your own power? You can't win any battle at all, all by yourself. Because you know why? In the first place, you are weak. We are all weakling. We are weak. We are all strengthened by God. By God, we can do all things alone through Christ who strengthens, who strengthens us. So you are weak and that's why you are still where you are. You are still where you are. You are still where you are. Yeah. That is why you're still fighting the battle. Because your strength cannot take you through the battle. Your strength cannot make you overcome that battle. That is why you are still, you are up today and tomorrow you are down. Because why? You are not stable. You are not established. Your hand is not strengthened enough. The word of the Lord says, the Lord strengthened my hand. He taught me. He taught me to fight. Okay? So, we are all, you know, we, are, we, we, we lack strength. Your strength is small. That is why you are still facing that battle. That is why you are beating down. That is why you are beating down. Another thing that um, we saw about Jehoshaphat was that Jehoshaphat gave himself to the story of the world. In winning the battles of life, you must, like Jehoshaphat, do what you must be you you must take confidence in the lord you must trust in the lord you must trust in the strength of the lord and the might of his power not in your own intellect not in your own ways not your own abilities not your own thinking not what science says not about the things that is happening around us let's move on jehoshaphat was the lover of the word of god and he even went on to make sure that the knowledge of the word of God filled his whole kingdom, the whole kingdom. In verse 7 to verse 10 of that Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 17, of that same Chronicles chapter 17, the Bible said that Jehoshaphat called all the priests of Israel, he called them to himself. And do you know what he did? He gave them the Lord. Each of them had a copy, you know, the Bible said they had copies of the law of the commandment of God. I so much love this guy Jehoshaphat, but it's so unfortunate that when we talk about King Jehoshaphat, we only re re refer to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and we begin to talk about how uh, he led the Israelites to praise the Lord and um, the Lord made his enemies to lay ambush, but it was more than that. Jehoshaphat winning his battle was not so Something that uh, you know happens spontaneously. Jehoshaphat was a man of God. He was a man who was committed to the things of God. So Jehoshaphat gave himself to the study of the word of the Lord. He read the law of the Lord and then he did what he commanded the priest that they should have a copy. They had copies of the word of the Lord. Every priest. They called Nehemiah, he called uh, Nekiah, and the rest of them. And then when he called them, do you know what else he did? He instructed this priest, he asked them to go to all the cities of his kingdom to begin to teach people about the law and the commandment of the Lord. Glory be to God. So you see, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, um. He told them to travel. That's the word in the Bible. He told them to travel, travel around the city and begin to teach the children of Judah, Israel, to begin to teach them about the law of the commandments of the God of Israel. And the priests did. And as a result of this, the knowledge of the word of God did what? Fill the all of his kingdom. And guess what happened? The Bible recorded in chapter 10 that uh, uh, because of this deliberate action, uh, uh, action uh, Jehoshaphat was deliberate about learning of the word of, the God, of God. Not just only that, he made sure that everyone around him knew about God. And as a result of that, Bible said his city was peaceful. His city was quiet because by the reason of the knowledge 
of God, of the word of God, fear fell upon the neighboring city, in the neighboring kingdom, countries around me. The neighbor, not just any other neighboring countries. The Bible says the neighboring countries who were to wage war against him, who were to come up against him in war. The Bible said that the fear of the Lord came upon them. They were careful that no those people that were committed i don't know what god i don't know the way god has showed up himself you know as so much showed up himself it's evidence that yes you say Jehoshaphat and his kingdom, I am their God and I am with them. And so they could not do anything. And so the the, 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 the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was peaceful. So, I mean, do you know, uh, not only that, not only that, the Bible recorded that even some of those kings of the neighboring countries, they brought presents and they paid tributes to Jehoshaphat. You know what? In his time, Jehoshaphat experienced what a book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 says that he of the ways of the man pleases God. He will make his own, even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see, because why? Jehoshaphat understood the precepts and the principles of God and then he commanded his people to do that same thing. You want to win a battle? Please God. Please God. And then it will make your enemies to be at peace with you. Bible said that the city of Jehoshaphat was peaceful, was quiet. And some of the kings of the Philistines and all who were supposed to be warring against him, they brought present and paid tribute to him. They brought lots of gifts. That is what the Lord can do. He will cause your enemy to be at peace with you. If only you do those things which are pleasing unto him, if you seek him. Another thing that uh, I'm going to talk about is uh, I'm going to and I'm going to end here and then I'll continue the next time is that Jehoshaphat depended on God always for guidance. <laughs> he depended on God always for guidance and instructions. Okay, and to me this is like um, the peak of a secret for winning the battle he won in the book of Second uh, Chronicles chapter twenty. You know. This was it. This was it. It depended on God. A lot of us, when we are at a crossroad or when we are devastated or when things are not going right, instead of us, you know, you know, to seek counsel, God, what is it that I'm doing wrong that is not making things to work well? Because if you are doing the things that is pleasing to God, of course, it will make all things. The Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love Him. So, if you love God, if you do the things that are pleasing to Him, He will instruct you. The Bible says He will instruct me. I will hear. So, you will hear a voice from behind telling you which way to go. It will instruct you and direct your path because even as word, because you 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 feed on. His word, the Bible says, His word will be like a lamp onto your feet and a light in your path. So definitely, you will never walk in darkness. So Jehoshaphat was a man who constantly seek the counsel of God. You know, his life was centered around waiting on God for instruction. How do I know this? In the book of Second Chronicles, chapter eighteen, when King Ahab, you know, uh, I was, I think, he married the daughter of King Ahab. When King Ahab asked him to go to war with him to rim, uh, Ramoth Gilead, he agreed. But he instructed the king. He told him that seek. O king, seek the face of God first. Seek the face of God. What is God saying to you? Are you seeking the face of God in, in the midst of that battle? Or you are just trying to fix things yourself? You know, every time we try to fix things ourselves, you are just limiting the power and the ability of God. That is it. You are limiting the ability and power of God. You know, it's just like you are contending with God. You are struggling with him. You don't want to give him the chance. No, give him room. Let him take charge. After all, he is the Lord strong and mighty. He's a man of war, mighty in battle, Lord of hosts. Okay? So he, even though after instructing the king, you know, to seek God's counsel, and God didn't want him to go because God later told him that uh, Jehoshaphat, how can you go to war with an enemy of the Lord? But thank God that the Lord had mercy upon him, and you know, God remembered his work. So what I'm saying here is that um, 
uh, 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 Jehoshaphat, you know, stayed on God, waited on God. See, there is no such thing as uh, just a small battle. There is no battle that is small. Okay, you living is a battle. Is a battle. Is the bad battle. You getting your job that you are doing. Some people are dying to be in that position where you are. Okay, that you being a Christian, you are even facing battle because the devil is constantly at war with you. So there is no such thing as uh, you know as a battle, and uh, there is nothing like I, I can handle it because um you know you can't handle it because when we talk about battle, battle often. Re Require using the best of your weapons, using the best of you know, using the best of your armies, using the best of your tactics, using the best of your of, of your warfare weapons. I don't even know what you say. So, so, and you know that as a child of God, as a believer, even though you're not a believer, because God has a a plan and purpose for everyone. That is why you see a child grown up from who was raised in a godly home is given to addiction or something else that is so uncalled for. It's because the devil knows that this one is a threat to my kingdom. And so he try, you know, he tried to contend with the plan and purpose of God for such a, a, a person's life and begin to manipulate them to do those things which were not which are not pleasing to the person himself and to god so battles of life you know <laughs> especially for believers is always you know cooked up from the pit of hell so because we are god's own that is where actually so it will so it will be so foolish for you to think that <laughs> that um, your strengths can take you can make you win your battle that that your intellect can can make you win those back battles if you don't depend on God before you in fact it's be a foolish thing for you not to depend on God before you launch out you know in second chronicles 20 we saw that whatever happened at that in that second chronicles whatever happened at the battle scene on that day it wasn't a, just like I said it wasn't just a day thing it was a lifestyle it was a sacred lifestyle of Jehoshaphat that was reflected on that particular day yeah the secret life of Jehoshaphat was reflected on that particular day okay see let me tell you something about uh, battles battles don't just come and and you know come and end immediately no it takes hours it takes time like they take time so tell me how long can your strength sustain you and you will not get tired and you will not be overpowered no so Jehoshaphat's secret life was revealed his victory was a reflection of the secret lifestyle Okay, this is not just about singing or raise asking as uh, asking ministers, ministries to sing. No, it was a secret lifestyle of depending and waiting on the Lord for instructions. You know, when Jehoshaphat got the news that three kings and their troops were coming against him, <laughs> the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Moenites. That's what the Bible says. The clear word a war against him. So when the messenger came, what happened to him in Second Chronicles? And uh, 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 in that verse 3 of uh, Second Chronicles 20, what happened? The Bible said that Jehoshaphat was fearful. He was scared. But do you know what? Jehoshaphat has learned to be stable. Jehoshaphat has learned one thing. He has learned one thing, even in this chaos, even in the midst of the battles of life, even in the midst of his fears, in the midst of his worries, in the midst of, you know, everything is falling down. Guess what? Jehoshaphat has learned to wait upon the Lord, to seek God's face for guardians. And so the first thing that Jehoshaphat did was that he sought God. He sought God because he understood that no matter how mighty you are, hmm? Jehoshaphat understood that no matter how mighty you are, the weakest of your army is your strength. Yeah, because that is what the devil is going to use to win you, okay? So your strength is as much as the weakest of your soldiers 
And so because of that, having this understanding, Jehoshaphat knew that just like I'm telling you right now, there are some battles of life that you cannot fight alone. And then Jehoshaphat went on to instruct everyone in his city to seek God's face. You know, he instructed them to do what? To seek first God's face. First, the Bible said he sought the face of God and then he instructed people in the city to, to seek the face of God. And the Bible recorded that both the husband, uh, uh, every family, the father, the mother, and their young ones, their little ones, the children, the sought God. And why did they seek God? They knew that they cannot, <laughs> of course, no matter how mighty the army of Jehoshaphat is, when three countries, three come together against him, he knew definitely that he cannot overcome. So he did not begin to seek for man's help just like we did we do this day it didn't seek for man's help it didn't seek for man's advice the bible said about what is such cause face for guidance it did not call his chief of army staff he did not ask them to you know get his drone get his gun and everybody should lay and we shall prepare is such god is such god is such god and so he also told his people to seek God's help. <laughs> See, the king Jehoshaphat <laughs> did something that was very profound and it caught my attention that <laughs> Jehoshaphat, you know what, emphasized on the name of the Lord as a strong tower. You know, the book of Proverbs 18, 10 tells us that the names of those uh, of the, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runs into it and is saved. The Oshaphat, when seeking, when he sought God with his people, he emphasized on the name of the Lord as being a refuge. I'm going to stop here today and I'll see you shortly as I co uh, continue and conclude on the topic how to win a battle. Thank you for joining me today and I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I join you in faith and I pray for you that whatever battle of life you're facing, whether it is the battle of addiction, battle of masturbation, pornography, battle of whatever sicknesses, cancer in the name of Jesus, as you begin to put your trust, as you begin to seek God for help, as you begin to follow this precept of, you know, seeking God's face, calling on him for help, the Lord will stretch forth his healing hands upon upon you in the name of Jesus is more than able to deliver you he has done it before he's still in the business of doing it and so he can do it again if he did it before if he did it for me he can do it for you stay blessed and God bless you